What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over SEO competitive analysis and SEO competitor keyword research. And it's going to be a completely free method. So you can do a lot of this entire process using paid tools, but I want to show you how to use some free tools so you don't have to make the investment into paid tools if you're not ready to do that yet. So this is part 12 of my SEO tutorial for beginners. You can find the entire playlist in the video description, and it'll also be a YouTube card on this video. So you can easily find the entire playlist if you're looking to learn a little bit more about search engine optimization. So to get started, I kind of want to go over some of the goals and some of the main things you want to keep in mind as you're doing a competitive analysis. So essentially what you're looking for are keyword gaps. So areas where your competitors are ranking, keywords are relevant to their website that are not relevant to your website, or that you're just not ranking for yet. Finding backlink gaps, so not only looking for the amount of backlinks that competitors have, but also seeing some of the websites that link back to them. Now this is one of the hardest things to do with free tools, so if you're really looking for a deep dive into backlinks, you're probably going to have to invest some money into a software like SEMrush or Ahrefs or SpyFu or something like that. So what you want to do is you want to compare your website to direct competitors. So if you have a website and let's just say Amazon also lists a lot of the same products, Amazon is likely not one of your competitors. So you're looking for other competitors within your niche that have a similar size website as you do. I'm gonna be doing this video today about my website farmhousegoals.com. So essentially what I'm looking for are other farmhouse related websites and other websites that are very similar to mine. So I'm not gonna be looking at Wayfair or some of these other giant websites that have a ton of different products for sale that also include farmhouse decor. I'm really looking for websites that are gonna be really similar to mine that are focused on a single niche. So for mine specifically, I'm looking for other websites that have farmhouse decor and rustic home decorations and other similar things that are within the topic of my website. So you want to make sure that you're comparing your website to the closest competitors. You want to find areas of improvement for your website. So if you're seeing that some of your competitors have a ton of backlinks, some of your competitors are ranking for a lot of different keywords, maybe some of your competitors just have a much better domain authority than you do, you need to start working on those types of things because I believe in doing a competitive analysis either every quarter if you really wanna keep a close eye on your competitors or at least every six months. So if you're doing it every six months, you can kind of monitor how you're doing versus your competitors and you can always analyze new competitors in the process. You wanna understand why your website's not ranking as high for certain keywords as other websites, and then also staying up to date on your website versus your competitors. So that's why I think you wanna do this probably every six months just to find some of the top keywords that your competitors have, and then some areas where you can improve your own keyword research and your content strategy. For this particular video, I'm gonna be going through six steps. So step one is gonna to be to find competitors. So when I was trying to find competitors for farmhousegoals.com, I already know some of my competitors. So if you know some of your competitors, just start creating a list. Step two is essentially gonna to be to make a list of your top competitors. So I made a list of some of my top competitors down here. But what I do to find competitors is I use some of these tools. So the first one is gonna be SEMrush. With SEMrush, just the completely free version, or if you wanna sign up for the free trial, so they have a seven day free trial, you can do that as well and get a lot of this data for seven straight days and then decide if you wanna continue using the software or not. So if we come over here to SEMrush, what you can see is I'm gonna be in this domain overview screen a lot. So what I'm gonna be doing is building a spreadsheet of doing competitive analysis of my website versus competitors. And a lot of it's gonna be done using this domain overview screen. So you're gonna see right now, I have a domain overview for farmhousegoals.com. I was searching for another website here, antiquefarmhouse.com. But you can see under my domain overview, it's gonna give me organic search traffic, backlinks, my traffic trend. So if we look at my traffic trend, you can see I wasn't getting a ton of traffic here. 83, 101, and right now I'm up to 9,033. So my clicks are actually more than that per month, but this does follow a similar flow of how much traffic I'm getting. So if we come over here and we scroll down to organic research, you're gonna see competitive positioning map and they're gonna give me some of my top competitors here. So with this one, I pulled out farmhousefreshhome.com, fullmoonfarmhouse.com. So I think these are both really close websites to mine and you're gonna see competitive positioning for how many keywords, how much traffic some of these competitors are getting. So that's the first tool and the tool that I'm gonna be using the most here is gonna be SEMrush, the free version of SEMrush. If you do want to sign up for a paid tool, I highly recommend using SEMrush, but I'm not going to be doing <clears throat> but I'm not going to be doing videos about their paid tools. 
Now, some of the other tools you can use, and I have them listed here. So SEMrush I use a lot, SpyFu, Google search for your top keywords, a Bing search for your top keywords, serranking.com, serpstat.com, alexa.com, and similarweb.com. So going through each of them really quickly, you can see SEMrush here, just use the domain overview. You can also do domain versus domain, and they have some competitive research and competitive analysis tools that you can use if you wanna make that investment into SEMrush. The next one is gonna be SpyFu. So with SpyFu, you can come here, do a monthly domain overview for your own website, but one of the things they have is a competitive research. So you're gonna see top organic competitors here, and I can actually see myself farmhousegoals.com versus some of these other close competitors that they're showing me. Now you're gonna see things all over the board, so fossilblue.com only has 123 keywords, birchlane.com has over 53,000 keywords. I wouldn't necessarily consider Birchlane one of my competitors just because they're so much bigger than my website is. Now the next is gonna be coming directly to google.com, doing a search for farmhouse decor, and I'll start to see some of these things here. So something like the spruce.com, eight ways to add farmhouse style to a home, farmhousedecorshop.com, ltdcommodities.com. If I keep scrolling down, you might find some more examples. So decorsteals.com has farmhouse rustic and vintage decor. And then this one, donpedrobrooklyn.com, what is farmhouse style? So all of these different websites are ranking well for farmhouse decor, so I can use all of them as some of my competitors, just seeing what they're doing to rank high for this keyword. The next one is gonna be doing a Bing search. So same exact thing, a Bing search. I went a couple pages in, and if I scroll down here, what you're gonna see is, so something prettyhandygirl.com, 111 DIY farmhouse decor ideas. Keep coming down, AmericanArtDecor.com, Farmhouse Decor, Farmhouse Style Magazine. So you can find a lot of different examples of your competitors just simply doing a Google search or a Bing search along with using some of those tools that I showed you. Okay, the next tool is gonna be SERanking.com. So with this, you can enter your own website or competitor websites, and they're gonna give you some of your top organic traffic competitors. So right here is showing 462. But with the free plan, it only gives you about 10 different competitors. One thing you might find is that your competitors are much larger than your website because it's gonna be ranked by common keywords. But what you can do is come over here to this keywords totally and then just do two. So you can see I only have 4.2 thousand keywords according to serranking.com for my website, something like Wayfair is 1.4 million. So these websites are just so much larger than mine with keyword total and estimated traffic. So I can come to keywords total and just do 10,000 here and it'll give me some closer competitors that have a similar size website to mine. Same thing with estimated traffic, mine saying 6,000. So maybe I just come here and do two 6,000 or to 10,000 or to 20,000 to try to find some similar competitors. The next one that you can use is serpstat.com. So with this, the same thing, you enter your website and you would come here to SEO research. They have keywords and they have competitors here. So under competitors, it's gonna give me a lot of different keywords, common keywords, missing keywords, relevance. So you can try to play around with this a little bit to try to find some of your closer competitors. And it really depends on your website. So for something like farmhousegoals.com, the competitors they give me are all websites that are much larger than mine, just because we have a lot of common keywords. So you wanna find websites that are similar in size to yours, but Serpstat is another great tool that has a lot of free options there that you can use to find competitors. And you can also do things like domain versus domain, top pages, keywords, so you can find a lot of information using these tools. The next one is gonna be alexa.com. So alexa.com, you enter your website, and immediately what they give you are four of your closest competitors by audience overlap. So essentially these websites have a very similar audience to what farmhousegoals.com does. So I can use all four of these as some of my competitors because people who are visiting these websites also would probably have an interest in my website just based on the audience overlap score. So Alexa gives you a lot of information just completely free. They do have a free trial here and a pricing premium plan. So you can also get started with that if you want to as well. The next one is gonna be similarweb.com. So when you enter your website, you're gonna get a lot of data about your website. You can see it all over here, overview, referrals, search, social display, audience, and then down here to the left is competitors. So you can look at your audience interests, see some of their also visited websites. Obviously these websites are much larger than mine, and then competitors in similar sites once they have enough data. So they don't have enough data about farmhousegoals.com yet, but with Beachfront Decor, I entered it, and you're gonna see some of my close competitors. So beachdecorshop.com, nauticaltropical.com, ourboathouse.com. So all of these websites are some pretty close competitors to Beachfront Decor. 
So using all of these tools, you're able to find your competitors. I like using SEMrush and SpyFu, and then just going through Google and Bing if I have to to find some more competitors. And then some of these other tools can be helpful as well. So once you get past step one, what you want to do is make a list of your competitors. So here are some of the closest competitors for my website. So what I want to do is compare these competitors to my own website. So once you have a full list of your competitors in step two, you want to move on to step three, compare SEMrush stats for each individual website. So you can use the completely free version of SEMrush and use the domain overview report for each competitor. And then I look at keywords, organic search traffic, rank, so this is the SEMrush rank, backlinks, referring domains, and then top 10 keywords. So what I wanna do is I wanna open up my spreadsheet and I'm gonna create a spreadsheet that looks just like this. So I have my website and then some competitor websites, and then I'm gonna be looking at SEMrush keywords, traffic, rank, backlinks, and all of these data points in addition to Moz domain authority. And then what we're gonna be doing is trying to find the top keywords for each of these websites and then looking for keyword gaps. So I'm gonna show you how to do all of those things. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna open up SEMrush. And what you can see right here is I have a domain overview open for farmhousegoals.com. So when you come into domain analytics, just coming right to overview when you do a search. So you're gonna see here organic search traffic, SEM rush rank, keywords, backlinks, referring domains. And then if I scroll down, you're gonna see organic position distribution. This is showing I have 42 keywords in position one to three. And then in position four to 10, I have 660 keywords. So what I wanna do is take all this data and put it into my spreadsheet and then fill it out for all of these different competitors. Now there's different ways to automate this process a little bit better, especially if you're paying for some of these tools. The reason why I like to do it manually is because as I enter this number, I learn more about each individual website. Same thing is as I find some of these top keywords, copy and paste them here, I learn more about them in real time. So it is more of a manual process. It's also a free process. So if you're just using the free version of SEMrush, you can get all of this data here and then enter it directly into your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or your Google Sheets, whichever one you use. And you can find all of this data here. So my traffic trend for Farmhouse Goals, 9,033 clicks in February 2020. It's not the exact number, it's actually higher than that, but it's pretty close and it is showing the trend of clicks for farmhousegoals.com. So you can see I've grown a lot in the past few months as I've implemented my SEO strategy for this website. So what I wanna do is take all this data and I'm gonna enter it into Excel and I've already done this. So if I open up my competitive analysis spreadsheet, you're gonna see here farmhousegoals.com, antique farmhouse, farmhouse fresh home. So I've taken all of this data from SEMrush and I've just done a domain overview search for all these different pages. So if we come over here, you're gonna see I have a domain overview for farmhouse fresh home. I have a domain overview for antique farmhouse. So I can take all of these numbers and just put them directly into my Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So now I can see where I have some opportunities with some of these websites, why my website's a little bit smaller than some of them. So the next thing I wanna do is pull top keywords. So I've already done that, but you're gonna see here top keywords. And what I do is I click on the organic search. So you probably see me open it a few times, the organic search positions report for individual websites. So for this, it's organic research. And then what we're looking at is positions. So if we scroll down, it's gonna give me their top 10 keywords in terms of their traffic percentage. So antique farmhouse is a brand keyword, but I'm still gonna copy and paste it. But you can see they're ranking high for farmhouse decor, rustic farmhouse decor, antique farmhouse decor, farmhouse light fixtures. So for all of these different websites, what I wanna do is take this data, copy all these 10 keywords right here, and then what we're gonna do is come back over to our competitive analysis and paste all these keywords for all these different brands, including my own top keywords. So these aren't my exact top keywords in terms of driving traffic to my website, but they are pretty close to my top keywords. So you're gonna see a lot of these ones over here. So it's just gonna help me find some more opportunities. I'm already ranking for some Ray Dunn keywords so I can see where Farmhouse Fresh Home is ranking, especially for the top keywords that are driving traffic back to their website. So it just gives me some more opportunities. So if we come back over here, you're gonna see we've compared the SEM rush stats. And then the next thing was pulling the top 10 organic keywords. So just clicking on the top 10 organic, top organic keywords in SEM rush, doing it for each competitor, and then copying and pasting those organic keywords into our spreadsheet. So once we do that, we can move on to step five, which is gonna be to find keyword gaps. So I like to use the Google Keyword Planner to find keyword gaps. So I'm gonna open the Keyword Planner now. 
So if we come into the keyword planner here in Google ads, so you just open up your Google ads account, come to tools and settings under planning, you're going to see the keyword planner here. So all you need is a Google ads account and you can see these different keywords. And what we're going to do is we're going to do is discover new keywords and we're going to start with a website and we're going to do this for each individual website. But what I want to do is I want to start with my own website, farmhousegoals.com. I'm going to use the entire website and get results. Okay, so if we scroll down, you're going to see it's going to give me 2,500 keyword ideas available. So what I want to do is add a couple filters. So the first one is I want the keyword text to contain either rustic or farmhouse. Click on apply. And then I'm going to add a filter and we're going to do average monthly searches have to be greater than or equal to 300. So we're going to click on apply. So just to narrow down our keywords a little bit. So if we click over here, you're going to see now we're down to 156 keywords. So we're going to download these keyword ideas. Okay, so you're going to get a spreadsheet that looks like this. So what I want to do is take all of these keywords in the keyword column. We're going to copy these keywords and then we're going to come back over to our competitive analysis spreadsheet and we're going to open up a second sheet. So I've already done this and what you want to do is take your keywords and put them in column B. So I've already copied and pasted my keywords into column B. And then what we're going to do in column C is we're going to do equals match and then open parentheses A1 B colon B comma close parentheses. So essentially what this is looking for is it's going to compare data in A in column A to the data in column B and it's going to be looking for matches of data. So it's going to help us find keyword gaps because we're going to enter our competitor keywords here and anywhere we see an NA that means that our keyword list doesn't have that keyword so it's a keyword gap. So what we want to do is come back over to the keyword planner and then we still have our same filters here. So I'm going to come here and do antiquefarmhouse.com using the entire website and get results. Okay, so for this one, it gave us 103 keywords. So we're going to download keyword ideas again. Okay, so we have their spreadsheet open here. So what we can see is their top 103 keywords related to farmhouse decor, rustic decor that have over 300 average monthly searches in the Google Keyword Planner. We're going to copy all these keywords. So copy them and then we're going to put them directly into our competitive spreadsheet in column A, so we're gonna paste them here. And then we're gonna take this column C, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag it all the way down. Okay, so we have column C all the way down here, so you're gonna see a lot of NAs. So what we're gonna do is come to the top, sort by column C, come to data, just go A to Z, expand the selection, click on sort. And now what you're gonna see is this is showing NA because I don't have any rows or any of the column here, none of the rows have this keyword here. So if we look at something like farmhouse wall art, for example, it's saying three because in row three, I have farmhouse wall art right there. If we look at black farmhouse lighting, what you can see is in row four, black farmhouse lighting. So I have some of these different keywords already relevant to my website. So what I want to do is take all of the keywords with the NA here and we're going to take them. So we'll take this one first, antique farmhouse lighting, come over here. Now all of these keywords over on the left with an NA means I don't have any of these keywords in my list. So something like farmhouse style lighting is not in my list at all. So we're going to come over, we're going to copy all the way down to here, copy it, paste, take these keywords now, come back over to sheet one and we're going to scroll down and then those are keyword gaps between me and antiquefarmhouse.com. So I've already copied and pasted them here. So you're going to see these are some of the different keywords that I can start to try to optimize my website for. So what you want to do is you want to rinse and repeat these, this process for your other brands. So I would take farmhousefreshhome.com, go into the keyword planner again, enter that website. And then what we do is come to our competitive analysis spreadsheet, sheet two, get rid of all of these keywords in column A. So we'll delete them and then we can get rid of these keywords over here. So then what we would do is take the keywords for farmhouse fresh home and do the same exact thing. And then any of the keywords that have the NA over here, we would take them on the left-hand side, copy them, put them right into sheet one. So I've already done this. I pulled all the top keywords and I've also pulled these keyword gaps here as well. So coming back over here, we found our keyword gaps. So just going through some of the steps really quickly. So it's find competitors, make a list of competitors, compare SEMrush stats. So this is a pretty easy process, finding your competitors, comparing the SEMrush stats that are available to you even with a free SEMrush account, pulling the top 10 organic keywords for each individual website, and then listing each competitor's top 10 keywords on your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, finding keyword gaps. So using the Google Keyword Planner, you wanna download your most relevant keywords and then compare them to each of your competitors 
and then putting that data in your spreadsheet as well. Last but not least is we're gonna list our keyword gaps, we're gonna list the top keywords, and then we're gonna use a tool called searchvolume.io, so that's a website, to rank each keyword by monthly search volume. So what we wanna do is we wanna come back over to our spreadsheet, and we're gonna start with the top keywords here. So we're gonna take all these top keywords, we're gonna copy them. So you're just gonna take these top keywords, we're gonna come over to a tool, searchvolume.io. So this search volume tool here, completely free, you can look up 800 daily keywords. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste our data here. Okay, so that's 42 total top keywords for all of our competitors. Click on submit, and it's gonna give me the average monthly searches for all of these top keywords here. So what we can do is download a CSV file or just come here and copy these keywords, and then we wanna take them and put them directly into our spreadsheet. So we have our competitive analysis spreadsheet over here. So over to the right-hand side, you can see I have my competitor top keywords here and search volume. So if we scroll down, you're gonna see this is 42 of the top keywords that my competitors rank for. So we wanna do the same exact thing for the keyword gaps. So what you would do is come down here to the competitor keyword gaps. We're gonna copy all of this data again. So you copy it, come over here to searchvolume.io, enter those keywords here again. So get rid of these ones, enter the other keywords, click on submit. So I've already done this obviously in my own spreadsheet. And what you're gonna see is now I have a competitive analysis spreadsheet where I can see some of my competitor keyword gaps, my competitors top keywords, and just looking at total keyword gaps. So if we come down to the bottom here, you're gonna see it gave me 149 total keyword gaps here. So this is a lot of different keywords that I can start to optimize my website for and hopefully improve my rankings. Now the reason you wanna do a competitive analysis for search engine optimization is to find some areas of opportunity for your website. So I can see just right here, Antique Farmhouse has almost triple the amount of keywords as I do, quadruple the amount of traffic. They have a lot more backlinks than I do, a lot more referring domains than I do, triple the amount of keywords in the top 10 according to SEMrush. Their Moz domain authority is much better than mine. So I have a lot of work to do to be able to get to this level that antiquefarmhouse.com has farmhouse fresh home. So some of these have less keywords, more traffic. So just quickly looking at the data, I can tell they're probably driving a lot of traffic for the keyword Ray Dunn. So maybe if I can improve my average position for that keyword, I can drive more traffic back to my website. So I like to create a competitive analysis because you can find a lot of different data about your competitors. And one last tool that I want to show you, completely free tool is websiteseochecker.com slash spy keywords. If you go to website seochecker.com, you're gonna see spy keywords over here to the left. You just enter a domain, click on I'm not a robot and spy keywords. And if we scroll down here, you're gonna see all of these keywords here. So these are some of the top keywords for farmhousegoals.com. And just even quickly looking at this data, I can see farmhouse bedding in the 12th position, farmhouse shower curtain in the 11th position. If I can get these keywords to a higher position, hopefully in that top one to three, then it's gonna help me take advantage of some of this search volume every single month. So if I can start driving more of this traffic back to my website, it's gonna help me continue to improve my overall search traffic. Now looking at something like Ray Dunn, I have the 35th position for this keyword according to this tool. My search volume here is 135,000. So if I can get this position much higher, it's gonna help me drive a lot more clicks back to my website. So this is how to try to find some opportunity keywords or just spy on keywords from your competitors. If you want a longer list of keywords for some of their top keywords, this is a great tool to use. So the other website that I like that I've talked about in previous videos is seoreviewtools.com. They have a lot of free SEO tools here. So if you wanna look up backlink checker here, you can find a little bit more data about your competitors' backlinks. I'm not gonna go through that in this video, but Quickly reviewing, we listed our keyword gaps, we used searchvolume.io, we ranked each keyword by monthly search volume. So we went through this entire process to create a free SEO competitive analysis. We found our keyword gaps. We didn't find the exact backlink gaps, but we could do a little bit more research, especially using that free tool I just talked about to find more backlink gaps. We're able to compare our website to hopefully find some opportunities for creating content, some of the keywords that we can target because if our competitors are ranking for keywords and our website is similar to our competitors, what we need to do is go in, create better content, more comprehensive content, making sure that we're using some visual media like images and video to kind of stand apart from our competitors. And that's essentially a free method for an SEO competitive analysis and competitor keyword research. I would highly recommend if you're doing this, keeping this up to date about every six months. So date when you do it, 
if I would go back and do it, I'd probably want to do it again, maybe in August, maybe I want to do it in September, right before the holidays, kind of start to get in full swing. So I can see how I'm doing versus my competitors, try to find some more areas of opportunity and just redoing this entire spreadsheet. You can do it in a second sheet with a new date here at the top and then just comparing your data to see have you increased your keywords, have you increased your traffic, do you have more keywords in the top 10, more referring domains and backlinks, how is your SEM rush rank now compared to February 26, 2020, and then Moz Domain Authority, is my domain authority increasing over time? So if you have any questions about this process, please leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.